somebody who represents what we call the civil society. Uh, as a president, I mean, I am former, but and in the end I said uh, even today that all of us will be former in the end. But as a president of the European Economic Social Committee, we are uh, not the politicians, we deal with politics, but we are representing organizations like the social partners, like NGOs, um, and of course we are based on a French model, so we exist since the Rome Treaty as an advisory body in the Treaty for European Union. Um, when I was um, elected as um, president 2010, I find a very interesting uh, newspaper occasionally uh, in English, in a, in a Spanish uh, newspaper, El Pair. And uh, let me say something about diversity and culture. Europe is the continent of uh, diversity, even if we say that we have, are united in the, this uh, diversity. The variety of culture forms and traditions demonstrates uh, this. And for me personally, music is very important. It's inspire, it's encourages reflections, and it gives contemplations and produce inner experiences. And I would like to quote a piece of this paper I read. It's an historical professor, José Henri Ruy Domenech. And he believes that music is Europe's common language. It stay connected to no translation, sorry for the translators, and has spread throughout the continent and eventually through the world above localism, languages, religions, and class. Nobody asks when they listen to a mass or one of Bach's passions, if it was written for this or that religion. And religion is of no importance in music. So um, as president, I have tried also to use culture as a tool. Uh, as you understand, I hope, uh, for a formal institution like, like uh, this committee or the parliament, we have some limits what we can do. We have some obligation, and that is the, ro the role to give advice from civil society in the process to make legislations in European Union. But nevertheless, you can use some other ways also to communicate. And we have tried to use culture in relations to different events we have had in the committee. We had uh, produced uh, videos, we have produced books, we have cooperated with the very, very famous uh, Delora, Del Delroy. Is it, it's not a good pronunciation, but you know what I mean. The Prince uh, Brig Brigl, who has this, um, very, it was an old system to publish um, publications in order to train and learn people. And now, in some cases, it's in back, in, even in school in France, to make planches. I mean, old people remember better than young people, because you probably have not seen it. But nevertheless, I think also uh, cultural diplomacy is a possibility for civil society to use. And I will try to give you some few examples of what we have done when it comes to our activities in external relations. First of all, I think um, dialogue, we have to remember that it is to speak with, not to speak to, and it is to listen. Sometimes listening to another could be, give more result than to speak too much myself, ourselves. We also have to be aware of that inside European Union, and I talk now about European Union, but probably we can see similarities in other countries. We have a sensitive um, situation with these voices, races against migrations, against refugees, which creates a xenophobic, and where we always have to be clear and stand up for a human face 
of the development of our policies and the public opinion. What we have done when it comes to external relations is um, because our obligation is to make referrals papers to the uh, uh, council before they take a decision. But in the case of uh, external activities, we have regularly talks with the group of Latin America, with Brazil, China, Turkey, all the applicant countries for, uh, for membership in European Union. And of course, I don't know if we have a common understanding of what civil society is. But for me and for, for Europe, Europe, it is when people are engaged, for instance, in trade unions, it could be business uh, to, uh, employers associations, there could be people coming from environmental organizations, like in French ESEC. We ca it can be farmers, consumers, etc. It's a mirror of how non-governmental organization looks like in the uh, European Union. And of course, in our relations with exter in, uh, our external relations, we try to find partners. In Latin America, there was for the first time a head of state meeting in January this year between Latin America, Caribbean and European Union. 60 head of states coming together. One month before, we had our own civil society summit in Santiago, collecting people, representative people from trade unions, employers and other NGOs working for human rights, etc. And we had our own summit to give uh, comments and uh, uh, input to the real political summit. We have the very clear picture from their side that it was a lack of implementation and even politically willingness to, inf to, to implement what was already agreed on the involvement and the possibility for civil society. So they gave us, they gave me, um, duty to participate in the real heads of summit and to present uh, some result of the comet. And of course, when you're the day after the real head of state summit, it's always interesting, of course, to see Dilma Rousseff, to see Angela Merkel, uh, her Cast uh, Mr. Castro, etc. But of course, when you see in the summary of the, uh, of the outcome of this uh, summit to see in, in Article 25 that they have included the result of what we have forward. That is a way for the civil society to try to influence. But in every case, when we have some external relations, we also try to use culture as a tool. Sometimes when we go, for instance, to China, we have a regular twice a year round table with their Council for Economic and Social Affairs. They offer, of course, some of the culture evening. When they come to Brussels, to Europe, we try to show a little what is the Europe culture. So culture can and is a tool also for civil society to use in these connections. We have done it a long time, since 95, when Turkey got the uh, possibilities to negotiate for membership European Union. We have done it in the field of Euromed. We had a cooperation with the Mar Moroccan uh, ESC. And I just talked with the representative who has left from, from um, Morocco about the chair and the possibilities. And of course, when we also try to have this meeting, we try to use culture as a tool for learning ourselves, for learning how Europe works and the tradition and, and uh, works in, in the European Union. So, um, dear participants, I think um, the possibilities for culture dialogue and what the Institute is trying to do is excellent. And I am, Mark, very happy that you also have um, opened it for representative of what we call civil society organizations in order to see how can we contribute in the future to develop, how could we use our experience, our contacts also to increase your work. Thank you very much that you stayed, that you tried to listen, that you tried hopefully to understand.